Right now, these are my two favorite drones to fly, the Pavo 20 and the Pavo Pico, both with the O3 air unit. The DJI O3 air unit is just a really great camera system. You can capture 4K 120 frames per second footage at 150 megabits a second. That's crazy good quality during the daytime. The thing is, at nighttime, the super high resolution 4K sensor in the O3 air unit, it becomes more of a crutch. Each pixel is really, really small, which means each pixel isn't as sensitive to light which means it does really poorly in low light conditions. And it's winter right now, so we get even less time to fly. And so I'm finding that I'm flying my Pavo uh, 20, which currently has the O3 air unit, less and less because it gets dark really fast and you just cannot fly the O3 air unit in the dark. So to fix that, let's take my Pavo Pico, which currently doesn't have the O3 air unit on it, and let's turn it into the ultimate night ops FPV stealth drone. Now let's go over what we need to do this conversion. The key part about this conversion is the camera and I'm using the Cadex Polar Starlight camera with the Cadex Vista air unit. Now this is all fully DJI compatible so no matter what goggles you're using with your DJI O3 air unit it's compatible with this older generation DJI uh, or Cadex Vista system. And also this Vista system is surprisingly still readily available. It's available on Cadex's website as well as on AliExpress. And this entire system, the camera and the air unit costs under $120. I'll put links in the description. It's a pretty solid value. And the key thing about the camera is the sensor. It's a Sony Starlight sensor, which is specifically designed for low light conditions. It's only a 720p sensor, so that's a lot less pixels than the 4K sensor of the O3 camera. But less pixels mean you can fit a bigger pixels onto the sensor, which means each pixel is a lot more sensitive to light. And so this CAD Explorer camera ends up being more sensitive to light than like human visions, like this can see better than you can in the dark and much, much better than the DJI O3 system. Another alternative if the Cadex Polar isn't available is the Runcam Link air unit with the Runcam Night Eagle 3 camera. The air units are exactly the same, it's just like a different label on it, but the Runcam Night Eagle 3 camera is even more sensitive to light than the Cadex Polar, so it does even better in low light conditions. The only trade-off with the Runcam camera is that it's black and white only, even during the daytime. And so I still wanted uh, color capabilities during the day, so I'm going with the Cadex Polar. Next up, all we need is a way to mount the Vista system onto our Pavo Pico. And so we're going to need the uh, Pavo Pico cage. And then we're going to need the VTX mounting bracket and the screws. Now, depending on which version of the Pavo Pico or Pavo 20, this will work with either one of those, depending on which one you get, you may or may not have this VTX mounting bracket. For example, the Pavo Pico I bought was the O3 version, which came with the O3 camera protector and the ND filter. And so it did not come with the VTX mounting bracket. Um, that being said, the Pavo 20 that I bought does come with the mounting bracket. And so that's where I got this one from. If you do need to get the mounting bracket, I recommend you just buy a full frame replacement set. Here's one I haven't opened. Um, it can be either for the Pavo Pico or for the Pavo 20. It's only like 15 bucks for a full frame replacement set. It comes with everything. It comes with the cages, it comes with the prop guards, and it comes with the antennas and the VTX mounting brackets and all the screws. So it's a pretty good deal for 15 bucks and you're probably going to need it in the future anyways if something breaks. So pretty solid value just to get the entire frame set with the VTX mounting bracket included for just 15 bucks. And alongside the mounting bracket, it also comes with the screws. And I'm making a point of this because I actually tried to use my own M2 screws while mounting uh, the Cadex Vista to it, but it doesn't really work out because the tolerances are really, really small. There's not a lot of room in here to fit bigger screws, so you pretty much have to use these specific included M2 screws. Oh, and one more thing that I almost forgot is you'll need an antenna, and I'm just using one of the included antennas. Um, well, they include two for the O3 air unit, so I'm just taking one, and that's going to fit just perfectly onto the Cadex Vista little uh, UFL connector there. All right, first let's prep the Cadex Vista unit to be mounted onto the Pavo Pico. 
And if you haven't already done so, you should solder on the included six pin cable that comes with the Vista onto the Kylix Vista unit module. It doesn't come pre-soldered. And the connector is the same as the O3 air unit. So this should be an easy uh, plug and play kind of installation right there. The pin out and order and everything is exactly the same. And then for cable management purposes, we're gonna actually remove the cable from the uh, Cadex Polar camera. The camera, the back plate, I'm gonna put the screws off to the side. And this is just to help weave the uh, camera cabling through the Pablo Pico's cage. Next, we're gonna take one of the tiny little pigtail antennas that they include, and we're gonna pop it into place on the Vista module. And then I'm gonna put a very, very tiny dab of thread locker on this little screw that holds the uh, antenna clamp shut. I notice this does like to undo itself. So a tiny bit of blue thread locker, and then we're gonna tighten the screw down and hopefully that shouldn't go anywhere. All right, now we gotta mount the Vista onto the VTX mounting bracket. So we're gonna take the special screws, as I mentioned before, and screw them into here securing them with the nuts and also a little bit of thread lock to make sure these don't get loose. All right, and I just want to point out it is a fine line when tightening these screws down. If you tighten it too much, you'll end up bending the carbon. That's why I think you should use thread locker and just make it just very, very slightly snug. All right, anyways, the Cadex Vista is all prepped and ready to go. So now it's time to thread everything through the Pablo Pico's cage. So I'm gonna start by threading the empty camera cable through the front of the cage right here. And now we have to very carefully thread the antenna. We're gonna have it going across the side over here and up through the top opening here. And then behind it will be the uh, six pin VTX cable. Now this can get a little bit finicky, so you're gonna to need to push and pull and shove a little bit, but hopefully it should all go together without too much of a hitch. And now we should be clear to carefully slide this all into place. It is a little finicky, so have some patience there's the completed unit right there. So the Cadex Vista is sitting very nicely in there and all the wires are coming through. Now it's time to reattach the camera. Finally, it's time to attach the little camera pod back onto our Pavo Pico. But first, we're gonna plug in this little cable into the DJI connector that's on the flight controller. If the short cable is already on here, uh, you should take it out and then you're gonna plug this one in. It also really helps to use some tweezers because it's really fiddly. All right, the installation is complete. Our nighttime flying Pavo Pico is ready to go. Let's take it for a test flight. All right, we're starting here in this parking lot and the parking lot looks like it's almost daytime, but if you look at the sky, it's definitely night. And so that's the really, really cool thing about this Cadex Polar camera is that it's taking just a little bit of ambient light from the parking lot lights and it's just boosting it way up. And so you can see a lot better than you could in real life. Like this thing is more sensitive to light than your own human eyes. And so it looks like it's almost daytime right in the middle of the parking lot. So that's really cool. And so let's head off into the slightly less uh, lit area in this little like little park area. And first of all, it's, it still looks like there's spotlights just shining down from the parking lot or those pathway lights are super bright, but that's not how it looks in real life. Those are all dimly lit. What the camera is doing is it's just boosting that light up. You can also see that it does look a little bit grainier where there's less light. That's the, the small amount of noise that's coming because it's trying to boost the amount of light coming in, but it's still very, very much flyable. So that's pretty awesome. 
for comparison, let's take a look at what footage from the DJI 03 looks like. And now you can see this is pretty much exactly representative of what human eyes would see. So you can see that there's a lot more contrast. There's like less dynamic range. It looks a lot darker. Overall, while the O3 footage technically looks a lot cleaner because it has a lot higher resolution and bitrate, if you're actually trying to fly around obstacles at night, it's not going to be as good. It's harder to see like dark tree branches and stuff. All right, now let's switch over back to the Pavo Pico with the Cadex Polar Night Camera, and let's do a little bit of a torture test by going off to the side area by the lake. And there's very, very little ambient light here, and it is crazy how well this thing does with such little light. Like if you're walking down this path down here, you wouldn't be able to see your hands in front of you. It is so dark, but this camera can boost the tiny amount of little light and make it usable, make it so that you can fly a drone. So that is pretty awesome. And if you look over into the distance over to the lake over there, it's almost even flyable over there. You can see the little difference between the trees and the lake. It's pretty cool how well this camera does at night. All right, so there you go. I hope you found this video interesting. I had a lot of fun converting my old Pavo Pico into something more useful and making it into like a unique, you know, little night flying drone kind of thing. Um, if you like this video, please give me a subscribe. It'll help me a lot. And if you have any more ideas on cool little drone projects I can do, please leave a comment and I'd love to take a look into it. So there you go. And thanks for watching.